Right, another uh, shop improvement video. Uh, I got tired of one of my power supplies having a fan in it, and sometimes I want to just have dead quiet, especially when I'm videotaping and stuff. So uh, I've had this for a long time, but I, I kind of noticed it in the uh, other part of the lab, and I figured, well, that, that's the one I should use. I'll, I'll just uh, move this one over. Um, so I thought I'd take a look at it and see if, it, uh, if it's still up to snuff or not. So it's a Tektronix 1101 power supply. Now, why does Tektronix be making little power supplies like this? Well, it's actually for this one little connector here right in the center, and it's for powering up scope probes. So some scope probes need need external power, and this this is just a little, uh, it, it's an AC adapter. It's just really big. It's uh, plus, plus 5, plus 15, and minus 15, so the little, uh, connector there brings all those voltages out to the scope probes. Anyway, uh, it's got uh, a regular power connector on the back. Uh, what does it say on the back here? Mm, half an amp fuse. Mm. Guernsey Limited. Interesting. I don't know what kind of date this thing has on it. Anyway, let's open it up and uh, see what's inside. There's a, a improvement that I uh, uh, that I was going to make. So, all right, let's uh, take the top off. Take the screws. There's just two screws in the bottom that hold this clamshell together. There we go. Whoa! So maybe sideways is better. Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. So it's. Uh, Completely linear supply. It's got a nice big transformer. This thing's pretty chunky, so it's nice. And uh, it looks like something I would design. It looks like this is exactly what I would do if I was given this task. Uh, it's got just regular thing, four bolts down. It's got some type of chassis in it that's got just bent aluminum. The, the bent aluminum doubles as the heat sink for the three terminal regulators. It uses 317s and 337s. Uh, it's, everything's adjustable. There's pots on all three uh, voltages. It's got a nice big bridge rectifier. Uh, all of the capacitors are cable tied together. It's just, it's done really, really well. Um, obviously very old school, but yeah, like I said, it looked like something I would I would build. So so what did I do to it? So these these uh, four uh, banana connectors here are are these terminal what do you call these binding posts? Um, I added so these weren't part of the original uh, box. Uh, so I drilled four holes and put these in there and wired them in. So the only thing that used to be on the front was that one little tiny that one little tiny connector. But uh, I put these on. All right. So, uh, what was the modification that I made? Well, first of all, I tested it out, made sure it still worked. Then I said, okay, I want to do a modification. And so the modification I did was uh, I wanted to current protect the um, DC voltages. So um, I did a video once on uh, polyfuses, and I, and I still have some polyfuses. So um, I measured the current uh, capabilities of this power supply and determined that um, it was fine just up to one amp, and I, I'm not going to use it past one amp, so I figured one amp's a nice place to stop. Um, the little three terminal regulators I good, think are good for an amp and a half, if I remember the data sheets. Uh, they are on little sill pads, and like I said, this cheesy heat sink, but I think they probably be fine to an amp for sure. Um, so, uh, I wanted to put a polyfuse on each one, so I had uh, 0 .9, 0 0.9 amp polyfuses, and I figured, perfect. So I put a polyfuse on each of the red terminal blocks. Uh, so those are on there now. And uh, I was about to test everything and make sure it still worked fine. And I was going to use my, um, my load tester. Now I've done a couple videos on DC load, uh, loads, um, but I don't think I've actually ever used one in a video to do work or to test something. Maybe like a fake thing, but not a real thing. So anyway, so I thought I'd make a good video. And you get to see the inside of this little box, which is really cute. All right, so let's get out the electronic load. All right, uh, here's the load that I built. I've got three electronic loads, and like I said, I've got videos of all three, I think. But uh, this is the one that I built, so I want to use it. 
Um, so let's see if this is on. Yeah, there's a power indicator. And I'll hook up ground. Let's do five volts. All right, yeah, I'll turn on this. And I'll turn the current down. And I'll hook it up to the load. And it's giving out five, 5.08 volts. And we can increase the current. And we can increase it to half an amp. So here it is at half an amp, 4.97. And let's take it up to 0.72. Things are fine. And take it up to an amp. There we go, 4.867. Maybe a little bit of drop in the uh, in the wires and an amp, so that's probably just fine. Um, and it seems to be stable. I don't see it coming down, so I think the uh, polyfuse is probably happy at that uh, at that current level. Okay, so let's turn this one down. I have a ten turn pot here, so it's nice and easy to set. And I have uh, some of these meters. Uh, this one has really good resolution on it, which is nice. All right, so let's go over here to, ouch. Let's go over here to the plus 15. I have to be careful. When I get to the minus 15, I'm gonna have to change polarity because this thing is, is only one way around. Okay, so we get 15.1 volts out here. Let's uh, increase the current up to half an amp. Oops, a little farther, 1.5.2, 14.9, great. And 1.0, great. So if people aren't, uh, if, if you haven't watched my electronic load thing, all this thing is is an FET to ground. So it's a big, hunky uh, N-channel MOSFET that uh, has some circuitry on it so it can set a constant current, but it basically uh, regulates the, the load side. It, it uh, is a, uh, an N-channel FET to ground, and so it applies, it applies whatever current you have set here to the ground, to the ground side of, uh, of the box. Yep, it's working good. Okay, so let's test the uh, minus 15. And like I said, the polarity is funny so let's uh, let's swap it over here. Minus 15. We'll use black and red. There we go. So we get fifth plus 15 now because we've swapped the leads. So let's go up here to half an amp. Oops, 0.6. All right, fine. 15. And all the way up to an amp. Yeah, it looks good. So I like the little box now. Um, like I said, plus five, plus or minus 15, all at one amp. Um, and now it has polyfuse protection. So if I accidentally short anything, it should uh, protect itself. Um, and maybe not blow a fuse, because replacing fuses is a pain and can get expensive, but polyfuses will last forever. So anyway. Um, like I said, I have a, a video on polyfuses and I have videos on electronic loads and uh, gives you an example of testing a power supply out. If the power supply had been weak, um, you would see the voltage drop as we increase the current. So that might be a limitation of the transformer. The transformer might, might start to go down. It might be a limitation of the regulator circuitry, maybe the uh, Mm, three terminal regulators start to heat up or a different type of power supply, maybe the transistor heats up, so the voltage will start to drop. So what you're really looking for is as you increase the amperage, the, uh, the volts are staying within the range that you need them to stay in. Now, uh, there will be some, like I said, there will be some voltage drop on the line. Um, you could put a separate voltmeter right here on the power supply um, and monitor it instead of using this meter. You could put on your own meter right here um, to eliminate this voltage drop, but uh, for something like this, uh, everything everything looks great. 